How's it going guys? It's Ozzy801 here on Timmy Decks MTG bringing you another deck tech. Today's Timmy Deck is Rakdos Lord of Riots, who's a really really powerful commander and um, it, that's about the, about the best, like, about the only thing you need to know about him. He's super powerful and he's very creature based. Um, just start off by reading him here. He's Two black, two red for a 6-6 six, six flying trample legendary creature demon. And then he says, you can't cast him unless an opponent has lost life this turn, which is pretty easy to do in this deck. It's pretty easy to get that online, so um, I'll be going over a lot of ways to, to get to there. And then creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn, um, which is already you can probably tell right off the bat that is an extremely powerful and strong ability um and we're going to be abusing it like crazy um probably the first place your mind goes to is eldrazi tribal because they're pretty much all generic mana costs while we do have a lot of those like a few good eldrazi's in here it's not the main focus it's not a purely eldrazi tribal deck although they are definitely in this deck so let's get started so i've split up the deck into different card types and i will start off with the land base so as you can see it's black red so we have basic swamps we have one two three four five six seven basic swamps and one, two, three, four, five, six basic mountains. Um, onto our dual lands. As you guys know, I'm scared of color fixing, so I like my dual lands quite a lot. We starting off with the Battle Bond land, Luxury Suite. Um, enters tapped unless you have two or more opponents. Uh, really good card, especially in Commander. We got the Graven Cairns, which is just the filter land, so another dual. Bloodstained Mire. This is the only fetch land we run in this deck. I like to run the on color fetches just because it. I'm going to do this just to make it easier on my hands. I like to run the on color fetches just because it makes it easier. It's more on brand for the deck. I don't like to run the off color fetches. Shadow Blood Ridge. Um, really simple dual land. Canyon Slope. This one has basic land types, so it is fetchable with the um with the fetch land that we run in this deck um i like it because it has cycling but if it didn't have those land types i wouldn't run it so blood crypt is our next one just a simple shock land sulfur springs is the pain land that we run smoldering marsh also fetchable with those basic land types um, enters tapped unless you control two or more basic lands as you saw we run um, a few, quite a, enough basic lands that this will most likely enter the battlefield tapped if we draw it late game. But if we get it early game, then it's just a simple uh, tapped lands, and that's not that big of a deal. Rakdos Carnarium, this is a bounce land, this, the special new art from Double Masters 2022, which I like. Haunted Ridge is one of the dual lands from the new one of the new Innistrad sets. That I really like these lands. I wish if they were fetchable, these would be uh, extremely pricey, but unfortunately they do not have the um, basic land types. Obviously we got Command Tower. Um, Foreboding Ruins, just another, another dual land. Uh, it has a little clause whether it enters tapped or not. Oh, dropped it right on the ground. Blight Step Pathway. Um, this is one of the MDFCs that has the other pathway on the other side. Can come in as either one. So I like to run those. They can either be a swamp or a mountain. Um, Dragon Skull Summit. Again, just another duel. That concludes the duels. We're going to move on to the utility and colorless lands. Um, first off, we have the Cabal Coffers and Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth combo. Um, essentially the way this works is Urborg's going to turn all of our lands into swamps and Cabal Coffers is, it says pay two, tap, and add black for each swamp you control. So late game when we have a bunch of lands on the field, Cabal Coffers is going to tap for a whole bunch of mana. 
So pretty simple combo there. Bajukabog, oh, Bajukabog is an obvious include for any black deck. Get rid of those graveyards. Reliquary Tower, we want to draw some cards in this deck, although it's kind of tough, but we do draw cards in this deck, so we don't want to discard any of them. Sanctum of Yugen, this one's going to go get us one of our Eldrazi's. Um, or another card that I have in here that you might recognize from my last um, deck tech. So Sanctum of Yugen, really good. Temple of the False God, just a, a colorless land that taps for two. Secluded Courtyard. This one, we're either gonna we are gonna choose demons because this is a demon, a heavily demon-based deck, although there's not a ton of them in here. It's the only Creatures really that we need colored pips for, ex aside for a few utility creatures. So demons are what we're gonna what we're gonna be naming with the secluded courtyard here. And then obviously wasteland and strip mine. I run these in pretty much every deck that I ever build. Um, you have to get rid of those Gaia's cradles or the field of the deads and um, a few of those other really powerful lands that can just run away with the game. So uh, run those just in case. I don't end up using them a ton unless those lands come up like if someone else plays a cabal coffers in an herb ward combo then then i yeah i want to get rid of those so get rid of at least one of them so run those in the deck i'm just going to prop the rest of the deck up here we're going to move on to the creatures so starting here with the creatures that are just meant to get us some damage in so we can cast our commander and possibly start reducing some costs later we are starting off with a card that i really like called spear spewer um, only one red mana to cast this guy he's a zero two with defender tap deals one damage to each player that includes you but it's not a super huge deal um, ends up being um, just fine especially with as soon as Rakdos comes out, if this is on the field and this is just pinged everyone, then everything that you cast post Rakdos is going to be three mana less, three generic mana less, um, which is more than enough to make up for the one damage that we're going to take. Going into Keen Duelist, this is one of my favorite cards in all of Magic. Just so cool. Um, it's essentially Dark Confidant, but it does damage to other people. So say you have someone on the on the other side of the table that you know ha is running a super say they're running Luris as their companion I know this is an outlier case but um, if you know that someone has very low converted mana costs in their deck you can always choose them I'll just read this card to explain it at the beginning of your upkeep you and target opponent each reveal the top card of your library you each lose life equal to the mana value of the card revealed by the other player you each put that card you revealed into your hand. So this gets you essentially another draw on on your uh, on each of your upkeeps, which is already good. And then you also deal damage to people, which lets you cast Rakdos. And say you reveal a Eldrazi Titan from the top, they're going to take enough damage to make that Titan free as soon as you cast Rakdos that turn. So all star in this deck. I love King Duelist. Tree of Perdition is just a hilarious card. It's four mana for a 0-13 defender, and it has tap, exchange target opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness. And exchanging life totals and taking them from 40 to 13 does count as life loss, and it will let you cast Rakdos, and it'll be hilarious. Because <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna hit someone for a whole lot. Vile Smasher is really cool, very, very good card. Um, three mana to be able to start pinging people at random. Um, he does kind of draw a little bit of hate because people don't like to get pinged, but he's an interesting card and he, he really works in this deck. Moving on to the demons in this deck, I started off with Runescard Demon. Essentially this lets you Demonic Tutor. Um, you just go get something out of your library and put it right in your hand. And you gotta think of all these cards as if the generic mana just doesn't exist. So essentially what, in a perfect situation, this card is going to cost you only two black, and that's it. And then it's a 6-6 six, six with flying that lets you go get any card from your, get, go get the best card from your deck and put it right in your hand. Um, very powerful card. Burning Rune Demon is very similar. Essentially, uh, it's a four and two black, but we want it to be just two black. 6-6 six, six with flying. Go get two cards, and then you're going to choose an, an opponent. They're going to choose one of them. That one's going to go into your hand, and the other one's going to go into your graveyard. Um, 
So really good, really good in this deck. It's just more tutoring. Razaketh is also a tutor demon. Uh, you have to sacrifice creatures to do it though, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, it, it's all right for what it lets you do. Uh, for uh, in a perfect world, for only three black mana. So, Villas Broker of Blood, another one that's very powerful in this deck. Um, hopefully, just for three black mana, we can get a flying eight eight with um, pay a black and two life, and target creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn. And when you lose life, you draw that many cards. So that Spear Spewer that was pinging us earlier is going to start drawing us cards. This guy's ability himself is going to draw us cards. When our opponents attack us in general, they're gonna, that's going to draw us cards. So he's a, he's an all-star in this deck as well. Dread Calcademon. This is a board wipe on a stick. Um, an 8-8 eight, eight for hopefully just three black mana. It says whenever when Dread Cockademon enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all creatures your opponents control, then tap all other creatures you control. So it doesn't tap himself, but it does tap all your other stuff and destroys everyone else's stuff. So board wipe, just a good card. Here's a big win condition in this deck. So just for hopefully one black and one red, we get a one four with first strike and death touch. And he can only attack alone, so it limits our combat phases a little bit. But he says whenever Master of Cruelties attacks a player and isn't blocked, and they're going to be persuaded to not block because of the Death Touch and First Strike, um, that player's life total becomes 1, which will count as life loss for sure, so that'll make all of our stuff cheaper, and assigns no combat damage. So he's not going to deal the 1 damage, but he's going to take their life total all the way to 1. So, very good card. Um, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. These are our Eldrazi's. So, this is obvious. He's just a 10-10 for 10, or 10-10 for free, hopefully. Um, it says whenever you cast him, you exile two permanents. So, he's removal. He's got indestructible. And whenever he attacks, the defending player exiles the top 20 cards of their library, which is very powerful, I've heard. <laughs> Then we got Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, just an 11 for 11 mana for a 10-10, but again, hopefully free. Um, also just very powerful. Pause if you want to see these abilities, but these all are in here just pretty much because they're just super powerful and can take over games. Uh, Kozilek, Butcher of Truth, um, he's got card draw, so he's very, very good. Um, I'm going to keep these two out for a second because I have an interaction that I want to show you in just a minute. Pathraiser of Ulamog, um, just another Eldrazi. Conduit of Ruin lets us lets our stuff be even cheaper and lets us go get a colorless creature. So one of our Eldrazi Titans, we can go get it out of our library. Artis Artisan of Kozilek, a 10-9 that can get something out of our graveyard. I definitely would appreciate that. That's, it comes in handy quite a lot. And then Blightsteel Colossus. This is a free 11-11 with Trample and Infect and Indestructible. And whenever he goes to your graveyard, he shuffles back into your library instead. This is insane in this deck. Um, for free, get all those abilities. It's just, just really powerful. Um, then we'll go into our um, utility creatures. We've got a Meteor Golem, which in this deck is really good because it can end up being free. Um, for a 3-3 that destroys something when it hits the field. Um, just a really obvious include. Same with Solemn Simulacrum. Just 4 mana or free for a 2-2 that ramps us and draws us a card when it dies. So, really good. Urbrask the Hidden gives all of our stuff haste, makes all of our opponent's stuff enters tapped. And then Angel of Suffering. This is the one that interacts really interestingly with the two original titans that shuffle back into our library. So Angel of Suffering is a 5 mana, 5-3 five, flying Nightmare Angel. It says if damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards. So you're not going to take any damage, you are going to mill a bunch of cards, but chances are, if this stays around for long enough, you're going to mill into one of these two titans, and when you do, it's going to it's going to, one of when you do, they're going to shuffle back into your library themselves and your whole graveyard. So as long as this thing, as long as Angel of Suffering stays on the field and w at least one of these is in your in your library, you can't die. 
at least not to damage so um, or life loss so that's pretty interesting I, I, I like that so I put it in the deck Crypt Ghast is going to double up all of our swamps um, just add a bunch of mana also gives us the extort ability which can come in handy especially for that life loss effect Florian Voldaren Scion is a good, good card in this deck. So he's a 3-3 three, three with first strike. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponents lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. So essentially you get to impulse draw something. Um, this card is interesting because it changes the way that you kind of want to order your stuff so say like you have enough lands to play the stuff that you want so you don't want to drop your land just in case there's nothing in those cards that you look at that you can cast but you do have a land so you can play that land card and not lose not permanently lose anything else for the rest of the game so kind of changes a little bit about how you want to play but not too much that it's too confusing but good card in this deck onto the artifacts. Now we got ramp is what I'm going to start off with. So thought vessel, we don't want to be discarding cards. So thought vessel is a good one. Mana crypt, this is definitely not a budget friendly card. So um, I would take this one out and throw something else that might be a little bit um, more suitable to your budget in. But uh, for me, I really like this card and I uh, wanted to throw it in here. Soul ring, obviously this goes in every commander deck ever. The interesting thing about these three rocks though is that they do not help you cast your commander. So a turn one soul ring in this deck is not actually usually as good as a turn one soul ring in um, like say my clout deck because um, I have I, you have generic mana costs to pay in various other decks but in this one he doesn't help you the soul ring the crypt and the vessel don't help you cast your commander. So that's why there's only these three sources of colorless ramp. They're just good enough that you might want to run them anyways. Sword of the Animist, probably the best ramp spell outside of green that you can throw into any deck. So I would definitely suggest this card. Cryptolith Fragment, three mana for a rock that enters tapped, which you might be saying, we're playing commander in 2022. Why are you playing three mana ramp spells? Um, but it has tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and each player loses one life. So it helps cast Rakdos, helps, it enables him to where he can actually get out. And then if everyone has 10 or less life, which I've really never run into with this card, it also flips into the aura of Emrakul. And it's a creature, um, an Eldrazi reflection with flying and death touch. Um, and whenever it attacks each opponent loses three life so it's it's good but um, hopefully you're ending the game before everyone is down below 10 life um, that does include you because it has to be each player it also happens at your upkeep arcane signet uh, this goes in literally every commander deck commander's sphere also just a really good card that goes in a lot of commander decks i can see why a lot of people aren't playing it now but in this deck, I really found that it was is really useful. Bontu's Monument, so three mana makes all black spells cost one less to cast. Again, this doesn't help us cast our commander because he does not have um, generic mana. But whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So this is this can um, at least be an enabler to get him out. We have the Talisman of Indulgence, which is colored ramp. Rakdos Signet, another colored ramp. Then we have the two diamonds, the charcoal diamond and the fire diamond. These ones are less powerful, but I figured at least in this deck where we're running a little bit short on ways that we can ramp out and make it usable for casting our commander, I wanted these in here. So the two diamonds. Onto our utility artifacts, we're running swift, both Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves um, to protect the commander and give him some shroud. Um, well, give him some protection and haste. Uh, haste is really, really, really good in this deck. It's a main way that you win. So you want haste if you possibly can get it. 
Then we have Videlkin Orrery. So we have a lot of cards in here. We have a few cards in here that really discourage people from attacking us. So if we have this on the field, then people will be attacking each other and say one of your opponents swings out at another one of your opponents and deals a bunch of damage to them during their combat phase, you can real quick just say, okay, well, this turn so-and-so has lost this much life or this much life has been lost and you can drop one of your Eldrazi's on someone else's turn and no one's expecting it and no one's ready for it. So this is a very good card. On to our enchantments. We got Court of Ambition. Um, just a really great card. This is the only card in here that makes something like a token. Um, I guess it makes the, the Monarch uh, the monarch Tracker. It's not really a token, but... Um, so we don't have any token generation in this deck, but we do have the Court of Ambition that gives us a little bit more card draw at the end of our turns. Um, it's going to incentivize some people to attack us, but it'll add an, an interesting element to the game. And even if we're not the Monarch, each opponent's going to lose three life unless they discard a card. And if we are the Monarch, each opponent's going to lose six life unless they discard two cards at the beginning of each of our upkeeps. So that one's, that one's a team player. Sanctum of Stonefangs. This is a legendary enchantment shrine for two mana. Um, this is the only shrine in this deck, but this card says at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life where X is the number of shrines you control. This is the only shrine in this deck, so each opponent's going to lose X life, and we're going to gain one. We're going each opponent is going to lose one life, and we're going to gain one life at the beginning of each of our upkeeps. But it's a two mana way of enabling Rakdos to come out and also reducing stuff every turn. So, Fervor. This is really simple. Three mana gives everything haste, gives all of our creatures haste. Um, very good card, especially in this deck. Phyrexian Arena. This is just a good black card draw spell. So, each upkeep you draw a card, lose a life. So, we're drawing extra cards in our upkeeps. We, we love that. Liliana's Contract. We have a, a fair few demons in here, including our commander. So when this hits the field, we're going to draw four cards and lose four life. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control four or more demons with different names, we win the game. So there's one win the game clause in here, and that's it. And it's really, really good, um, especially in this deck because of all the demons. Then we have Animate Dead, which is just a simple way of getting something out of our graveyard for two mana. Um, it's pretty simple this goes away then the creature dies if the creature dies this goes away so yeah simple card then we have some removal we've got chaos warp baleful mastery is kind of a budget version of um, deadly rollick so i like this card a lot because it can help you make a friend throughout the game um, four mana to exile target creature or planeswalker or you can pay um one in a black, so two mana, rather than paying its mana cost, and then if that was paid, then an opponent draws a card. So, what I've done before is I've seen a threat, seen someone else that needs a little bit of help, and say, hey, do you want to draw a card? I'll remove that, but don't mess with me, right? So it's a good political tool in this deck. Hero's Downfall, which is just a, a better version of Murder. Uh, if you're playing Murder, then you might want to ch exchange it for Hero's Downfall. It's exactly the same uh, mana cost for an instant that destroys a creature or a Planeswalker, whereas Murder only destroys a creature. Lightning Bolt, um, one mana to deal three damage to something, yes please. Um, I love this card. Uh, it can be removal in this deck, it enables Rakdos to come out, it reduces our costs, so it's all around just perfect in this deck. Soul's Fire, three mana for an instant that says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any target. We have a lot of really big creatures. Even our our commander is pretty big. He's a six six. So um, even redu reducing stuff by six is is very powerful. Rakdos Charm, this one's really good. Two mana for um, a modal spell. It's got three different modes. You can exile all cards from target player's graveyard, so a little bit more graveyard hate, you can destroy an artifact, or, this is the best one, each creature deals one damage to its controller, so two mana to get Rakdos out, or to reduce a bunch of stuff, just another way of getting stuff cheaper. Spike Field Hazard, this one is one mana, deals one damage to any target, 
Um, and then it's also a land on the other side. I love these MDFC cards. They're just, they're really good. And in this deck, Spike Field Hazard um, has done its work. Even though it's only one damage for one mana, it's, it's, it's made infinitely better by it being a land on the other side. Then we have Vampiric Tutor. Just, I mean, obviously a good card. Lets you go get any, anything from your library. You can do it on someone end, someone's end step um, for only one black mana. Really good card. Ambition's Cost is our first of our sorceries. Um, just draw three cards, lose three life for four mana. It's a pretty good rate. Sign in Blood, two mana, draw two, lose two. Also an extremely good rate. Then we have Jessica's Will, three mana for probably one of the most broken cards in Magic. <laughs> um, if you control your commander, you can choose both of them. Then you add red mana for each card in target opponent's hand. So say you're playing with someone that gets a whole lot of value and is drawing a lot of cards. You're going to get a whole bunch of mana. Then exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. And then you impulse draw three cards. So for three mana, that's an insane rate. Vandal Blast, obviously just a super, super good artifact board wipe. Toxic Deluge, this one's also really good. Um, just wipes the board of everything. Mutilate, another board wipe, and Damnation, another board wipe. Then we have, this is th this one's called Round 2, but it's um, actually a card called Seize the Day. This is just a secret layer version. Um, it says, 4 mana for untapped target creature. And then after this main phase, there's an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. So you get another attacking phase. Um, you only get to untap one creature, but... It's got flashback, so for three mana you can do it again. Then we got Demonic Tutor. Two mana to search our library for any card put in our hand. I'd say that's good. Onto our Planeswalkers, we have Yugen the Spirit Dragon. This is just another really good board wipe. Or it's got Lightning Bolt attached to its plus two, so um, mana cost reduction deals with stuff that we don't want on the field, so great card. Obnixilis the Reignited. This is the last card in our deck, and it's a five mana for card draw uh, removal. And then, if we can possibly get it to its minus eight, then we get an emblem with whenever a player draws a card, you lose two life. It's a fun time, really fun deck. Um, I had a lot of fun building it, and hopefully, in the next little bit, I'll post a video of a gameplay with it. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you found this video enjoyable and useful and don't forget to leave a like and comment and let me know what you think and if you have any suggestions for switches i'd love to hear about them um, don't forget to subscribe as well and have a great night and i will see you guys later